Um, Ian, up the back, thanks. I've been thinking about the difference, or difference between the caretaker and the caregiver mm -hmm. and how that might relate to need and desire. Um, so assuming that the caretaker is the needy one and the, and the one first giving out desire or in desire is the caregiver. No, I would say the caregiver is the needy one. Um, but, but in the sex relationship, Obviously, um, we will swap between caregiving and caretaking quite freely, right? Now, if that doesn't occur and there's regularly a caretaker and regularly a caregiver and it happens to be the same person each time, then that means that you have a, a relationship that is based on a codependent injuries that you need to look really seriously at what's going on underneath that emotionally. In the end, every relationship will be, like, in the end, we will care for each other and we will be able to take the care from each other without there being one person doing it all the time. So in my history, I have become the caretaker, sorry, the caregiver, and the woman has become the caretaker, right? And, and that hasn't been swapping over that in my history. Now, with my relationship with Mary, that, that's, that, that's what's happening. All of my caregiving emotions are being confronted. Like, why am I caregiving? What's going on? What's happening within me physically and emotionally and spiritually to cause me to want to give to a woman all the time without actually receiving anything? How do I feel about receiving? All of that's being confronted. Allow yourself to confront those things emotionally. So in other words, in the sex act, for example, if you know you're always the caregiver, you lay on your back and relax and then let the other person be the caregiver and see how you respond emotionally. Because I can guarantee to you, a lot of you who are caregivers will have a lot of trouble with that. Does that make sense? Now, if you are the caretaker, then do the same thing. Lay the other person down, make them the caretaker, and you become the caregiver and feel your emotions as you do that. What are you feeling? Anger, whatever, you know, whatever emotion is coming up, let yourself feel that. In other words, use your sexual relationship, if it's a relationship based on love, use your sexual relationship now as a way to explore why you have these emotional interests and allow yourself to work through them rather than avoiding sex. What a lot of people do in sexual relationship is they go down the track of avoiding sex. And they do this in so many different ways. One way is by one going to sleep three hours after the other one goes to sleep. So there's no way that they can have sex then at night, right? Or one waking up early and getting up and going, not staying in bed with the other because there's no way then that they can have sex in the morning. Does that make sense? Like we've, we found a little pattern developing between us where, where um, I would go to the loo in the morning and come back to bed, but Mary had, has to go to the loo in the house, which is actually 400 metres away from where we normally sleep. So, of course, then it's impossible to come back to bed. Does that make sense? So, just the, we come up with these little ways, even, of controlling the sexual, our sexual interaction, when instead what we need to be doing is confronting our sexual interaction in our relationship. How's that? Is that confronting? <laughs> to start actually confronting the sexual interaction rather than just working around each other? You know, a lot of times we work around each other. A lot of times what we do is we allow the situation to develop where we know the other person doesn't really want it. So what we do is we don't confront them about that because we want to keep our relationship or we want to keep our relationship smooth and we don't want to have arguments or don't want to have fights and we don't want to do this and we don't want to do that so in the end we don't confront the issues between each other. Does that make sense with everyone? If you do that, you will end up with a codependent relationship, not dealing with your injuries, never being at one with God. If you do that. If you allow each other to challenge the other's emotional experiences, including the sexual emotional experiences, what will happen is you'll both be growing towards God and towards each other in the process.